Almost three years ago, I attempted to beat Monkey Ball 2 Story Mode while collecting all the bananas. It was one heck of a task to endeavor, but now that this game is out, I thought it'd be great to try out the opposite challenge, get through without touching any bananas. I'll be attempting every single stage. Yes, this includes everything from Monkey Ball 1, 2, the story exclusive stages, and the deluxe stages. So buckle the f up, you're in for a wild ride today. This game is a little different to the originals with the fact that you can jump. Since some of these levels are going to be stupid hard to complete, I'm allowing myself to jump whenever I want to. There's a total of 314 levels to play, so if I can save a few seconds by jumping, you bet I'm doing that. So let's roll in, shall we? We'll start off with the Monkey Ball 1 levels, the first one being plain. It was plain simple as I'm sure you'd expect. Diamond was even easier since the bananas were more spaced out. And our first actual challenge comes from Hairpin. Obviously, I can't go all the way around this stage since bananas are scattered around everywhere, so I tried to use momentum and swing myself around just one. And that's when I realized just how big the hitboxes are on the bananas. I try swinging to the left and I'd grab it, I tried the right and I'd either grab it still or run into the banana bunch. I must have tried this like 20 times before I just gave up and did one jump to reach the goal. Next was Wide Bridge, and I just needed to do a bit of weaving and waving. The bonus stages are interesting because some of them don't have goals, but rolling off them still takes it to the next level, so that's all I need to do for stages without goals. I was pretty nervous about slopes because of all the bananas on the hill at the end, but by just hugging the edge of the left side, I was able to get across scot-free. For some reason, there's more bananas and steps compared to the original, but they were easy enough to avoid. But Monkey sh really hit the fan with blocks. Bananas cover virtually every portion of land, and there's seemingly no way around this. Not even jumps were going to make any sort of difference because the banana's hitboxes are so large. The first thing I attempted was staying clear on the edge of a square, which in theory somewhat worked, but just a teeny tiny movement toward the center would nab me a banana. Then I tried jumping to the corners because there were less bananas there, but I didn't even come close to jumping to it with a jump. Next, I wanted to try doing two jumps towards the goal, but I always, always hit a couple bananas on the way. The only way I could get around without hitting a banana was bouncing off the very edge, and that always led to a fallout. And let me tell you, after staring at the same level for so long, my brain saw a potential path, but it would be stupidly hard to pull off. The idea here would be to start at the beginning and immediately charge forward and go either left or right the tiniest bit. Then, try to hit somewhere on this line I'm drawing and possibly avoid all the bananas, and then dip back to the left or right to reach the goal. The only problem with this concept is that, again, the banana hitboxes are too big. The best attempt I got at this was clearing the level with one banana, but I wanted to keep trying. Becoming desperate and with no answers, I turned on the helper finder so I could use the slow motion. The only idea I had was to bounce off the edge of one of the moving squares and then land on one of the corners somehow. After about 100 attempts, I got pretty good at figuring out where to land on the square, but the issue was I was going too fast and would fall off anyway. So, yeah. There's a chance this could be tasked, but doing it RTA even with the slow-mo would be a nearly impossible feat. Jump single required jumping because even hugging the edge, I'd always run into a banana. After that, I just had to get into the groove of jumping in between the bananas, and it's scarier than it looks because these are some big boys. Exam A was another particularly difficult level, because yet again, Banana Mania adds an excessive amount of bananas to every stage for some reason. But this one was looking feasible, just not that easy. I needed to jump over several bananas without messing up, and follow that with a well-timed skip using an exploit that I discovered when playing this last year. When you jump consistently, consistently and move forward, you gain extra height as well as gain extra speed. This works because the fall speed is retained and doesn't slow down unless you stay on the ground. So with this exploit, I can get to really high places or even far away places with ease. So the idea for exam A was to skip the curvy bridge because it's littered with bananas and would suck to jump over all of them. The main challenge at this point was just the ending because of a banana and a banana bunch that were really close together. They were really easy to run into on the way up and gave me a lot of trouble. That was until I realized that by veering more to the left and slowing down at just the right time, I could avoid both of those bananas. After that, I just needed to circle around the goal and very slowly wrap around so I don't hit any other bananas nearby. This one was quite the doozy, but I'm glad I managed to complete it. I had a really interesting dilemma with Blur Bridge, and that was after reaching the goal. I avoided the bananas no problem, hit the goal, and then collected the bunch after that. So should I allow that to count or not? 
because I technically did beat the level first, but I still touched the banana. Honestly, I think it's fine to count that, but for this level, that didn't really sit right with me, so I tried again and with very slow and careful movement, veered around the banana bunch and touched the blue tape. Hitter was extremely easy, and same with banana plate. That wraps up all the casual stages for Monkey Ball 1, so next up is normal mode. For each difficulty switch, I'll be switching the characters so you guys get a bit more variety. Bump was super easy as you'd expect. Walking didn't have anything in particular that was difficult, it was just really easy to choke if you catch my drift. It was mostly the ring at the end that was giving me trouble, but after some tries I cleared the stage. Repulse was stupid easy, and so was Narrow Bridge outside of needing to jump this one ring. Bonus Basic is exactly the same as the one in Casual Mode, and Break didn't break the bank. Curves was surprisingly fun since the path wasn't super narrow, and with Downhill, I just jumped on the left the whole way and made it down easy speezy. Huh, <laughs> wow, things sure are going well- Oh, not again. I don't even know why I'm bothering to attempt this level. There's even less blocks, and the slowdown didn't really help at all. Except I learned that you can retain more speed if you jump and then hit slow down. Wait, you can jump, hit slow down, and you won't go as slow. And at the same time, there's less blocks to avoid. Ready? Let's go! Oh yeah! Man, I was so confident after that one that I went back to blocks and guess what? I still, uh, I still didn't beat it. With bonus wave, I just jumped off the corner. And with choice, I made the right choice by taking this far left path and clearing the stage. Bowl was a little weird because I couldn't jump at it. I had to kind of crawl back up and then jump off the wall. That's right. You can even wall jump if the wall is at the right angle. Jumpies was extremely annoying because I kept running into rings in the air. Usually it was out of my control. I'd sit on the jump pad on the left and the red block would push me towards the right, forcing me to hit. With some fandangling and practice, I managed to get around all the rings and beat the stage. Stoppers just required me to jump forward, basically, and floor bent was really cool because I needed to jump across slanted platforms and carefully navigate my way to the tape. Conveyor was a little scary since I needed to switch from one edge to the other, but it was more than possible. Chaser was scary at first because the red and green goals had rings attached to them, but the blue goal had none, thankfully. What I loved about Jump Double was how you just skip 90% of the level and win, with or without avoiding the rings. And as you'd expect, I just jumped off the side with Bonus Grid, and then there was Middle Jam. Why are there so many goddamn rings here? The only way I could do this was to jump over every single ring, and that was pretty painful. My issue was that I couldn't keep Sonic straight because going perfectly straight doesn't work unless you're using the keyboard, and hell no I'm not doing that. I was getting so frustrated from the stage that I actually took the right path. And believe it or not, it was easier. With the bumpers heading towards me, it forced me to jump faster, which in turn gave me ample time to strengthen the camera out. So with practice, I was able to clear the stage this way. After that experience was Antlion, and uh, I jumped once and won. Wow. With Collapse, I just jumped off to the right and had to jump over a few rings. I was expecting to struggle with Swing Bar, but I just kind of stayed on the left side and was Gucci. With Labyrinth, I just needed to jump once, and Spiral took a few tries. I used a pretty interesting strategy with the jumps. I basically went to the twirly part, and then jumped to a smaller part of the twirls, and just maintained my speed really well to clear the stage. With Wavy Jump, I just had to stay on the left and jump over a couple rings. It took a few tries, but it wasn't that bad. Then Spiky was hilarious because I ran into this crazy glitch where I got launched in the air by landing on this specific spot spot on the spike. Don't know how that happened. Outside of the jump exploit, I found very little glitches, so this one was a cool spot. But anyway, you just start by jumping, and after three jumps, you get enough speed to get across and clear the stage. Unrest was ridiculously easy, and with Polar, I just needed to time out the ring cycles and jump at the goal. Blur Bridge was the same as the other one in the casual mode, but Hard Hitter was different from Hitter. Getting the goal was no problem. The issue was that I was swung into a ring after clearing the stage. I was really stumped on what to do after trying to jump over the ring, so I I just slightly changed the time I hit the goal and managed to barely avoid all the rings that way. Puzzle was uh, not much of a puzzle. I just needed a few good jumps and I was set. Although the last one was pretty scary since I got uncomfortably close to a ring, oh god. Banana Plate is the same as the other one, and like Polar, Polar Large just required a few good jumps. And that is all the stages for normal, so it's time for Expert. <laughs> 
Ruin has an obnoxious amount of bananas, but it was easy enough to clear. Branch was a bit annoying because I had to perfectly time my jumps over the bananas, but in a way, it was a good thing because this was not the last time I need to do this, so I was getting some good practice in. Overturn was super easy, and so was Excursion. I just needed to stop before hitting the tape or I'd run into the bunch of nanners. There is nothing to say about bonus basic yet again, and Dodecagon was actually doable. Out of all the stages like this, the hardest one was possible because there's very few bananas to worry about. Now, I know what you're all thinking. If you've been fans of me for a while, you know that exam C is intolerable garbage. And you'd be right, it still is. But the hardest part was actually the beginning. There's a long row of bananas I have to jump over, and getting a rhythm down takes some time. The hardest part was the end because my speed at the end would often knock me into this last banana. But all I needed to do was build some speed with a jump exploit, and I could skip most of the stage and get to the end that way. With Skeleton, I started by going down the normal way, only to realize the last path was littered with bananas that'd be hard to avoid. So instead, I jumped over this path of bananas at the beginning, and then jumped down to the end. It took a lot of tries, but it was more than doable. With Tracks, I just jumped backwards and had to be extremely careful to not hit the bananas afterwards. It was much closer to the tape than other bananas were previously. Bonus Wave is Bonus Wave, while Downhill Hard just required some well-timed jumps. Gears, on the other hand, was miserable. Look at how many freaking bananas are on this stage. The only feasible way I could do this was to jump from one chunk of platform to the other, but only when a banana wasn't hovering above it. This required extremely good precision and timing, especially at the end. Because at the end, the bananas were really bunched up, and the gears were spinning even slower, so I had to make insanely good jumps. Gears took a really long time to do, but I was able to actually clear it. Destruction was a piece of cake, but Invasion was just stupid. I hate this level already, but there's just no way I can do this. The path is stupidly narrow, and there's bananas practically everywhere, but I still tried, and was able to find a few spots here and there where I could avoid bananas, but this could only be done consistently using the slow motion, and even then it was so hard. The best attempt I got was 10 bananas, or just the one banana bunch at the end. I managed to figure out a pathway to avoid all the single bananas, but I'm pretty certain you can't jump around the goalpost to avoid the banana bunch. I tried it several times, and it just wasn't working at all. Diving also looked impossible because the bananas are so bunched together, until I realized I could just jump to the left and avoid everything I needed to. Floor slant required one tricky jump, and tram was completely impossible, I'll just say it. The bunch of bananas are practically touching the blue tape, so I couldn't reach the goal from the front or even the back without touching the banana bunch first. Swing bar long was pretty straightforward, but paperwork wasn't. By the looks of it, I was thinking I couldn't even begin to navigate the level at all. Luckily, there's a couple spots without bananas so I could get to the bottom easily, but the top was so damn hard because of the banana bunch. I eventually figured out I could build my momentum to get to the top easier, but I needed to peel just far enough to the left so I'd avoid the bananas. Ready? Go! Okay, sure, that'll, uh, that'll never happen again. Hey look, a bonus level I can jump off of. And next was Twin Attacker. I basically just needed to do a few well-timed jumps and go slightly to the left and back towards the goal after. Shockingly, there's almost no bananas on Sega logo. You'd think they'd have another 100 for no reason, but uh, yeah, not this time. With Snake, I just stayed on the left side, and Wind was awesome because I discovered just the right spots to hit to use the jump exploit to score an epic victory. I veered to the left again for sliders, and I basically did the same with Fall Down. Twin Cross was a little annoying as it required some lucky bounces, but it was doable. Next was a ton of easy levels, including Spiral Hard, Conveyor Parts, Bonus Bumpy, Gaps, Curvature, Antlion Super, Drum, and Twister. Following that was Speedy Jam, which, like last time, was extremely challenging. The strategy was basically the same, although this time I had to go on the left side and then quickly veer off towards the middle and finish on the right side. And it didn't take quite as long as I anticipated, simply because I'm getting more and more used to the jump mechanics. Quake was fairly simple, and so was Cassiopeia, Pirates, and Bonus hunting. Bowl open was tricky because the angle was super awkward due to all the bananas, but it was doable. Oh, and uh, I somehow did checker on the first try? Don't ask how that happened. Carpet was a very simple slide, but ridge was not. Bouncing over the bananas on a curved path was annoying enough, but then the banana bunch at the end was ridiculously close to the blue tape. I must have cleared this level like 10 times and would always hit those damn bananas. I was getting ready to claim the level 
impossible, but I wanted to try one more time. And of course, on that attempt, I avoided the bananas. But now we're at the mother load of insanity. One look at this stage and I instantly regretted the entire video. There are tons of bananas right down the middle, and you're supposed to only go down the middle for the duration of the level. So I analyzed Mixer for a bit and really paid attention to the rotating platforms. I realized that they rotate pretty slowly, and at one point, they're flat enough to be jumped on. They also happen to be just wide enough to jump off of while allowing you to avoid bananas. Because these jumps needed to be so specific, I had to turn on slow motion. There was no way in hell I was doing this without it. After tons and tons of attempts, I got pretty consistent at the first half, but the second half was a different story. It was much longer, and there was a big banana bunch right at the end that I also had to avoid. The reason for taking so long was figuring out how to build up speed, and I eventually realized that three small jumps and landing perfectly on the left side did the trick. But this strategy required insane precision and it was not easy to do. This was my best attempt. Even in slow motion, I'm surprised I pulled this off at all. Rings wasn't too bad. I had to figure out a few optimal bounces, and that was about it. Stairs was extremely easy, and so was Clover, Coffee Cup, Metamorphosis, and Blur Bridge again. Breathe was a little tricky since the squares kept flipping out, but it wasn't the worst. After that, Hard Hitter, Ferris Wheel, and Factory were easy peasy. Curl Pipe, on the other hand, was a pain in the butt. At first, I thought I needed to avoid the pipe entirely, so I kept jumping over and over and just dying two seconds later. Speed run of the original game take this path, but I have no idea if that could work with Banana Mania. So I went inside the pipe and found that I could actually avoid the bananas there if I'm really careful. I had to enter the pipe starting on the left, weave on the right, and then dip back to the left before reaching the last banana. After that, I just had to finish the stage and avoid the bananas near the goalpost. Magic Hand was another level that had an easy strategy, but was annoying to implement. I just needed to wait for the path to straighten out, then just carefully jump across and slow down right at the end to avoid the banana bunch. Banana play was easy as you'd expect, but Sanctuary wasn't in the slightest. The banana bunch was ridiculously close to the goal yet again, and since there's virtually no space to land on, I had no idea how I was supposed to slow down. That is until I slowed down. The slow motion was the only reason I could come to a complete stop and clear the level. And even then, it took a lot of attempts, but I did get it eventually. The final level in Expert is Dalu Ma, and the bananas were out of the way, so it was more than possible. Now what's coming Coming up, I'm certainly not looking forward to, which as you might know, is Master Mode. We had a pretty easy start with Wave Master. I just needed to stay on the side and I was fine. Fan Master had very little bananas to worry about, but you all know what's coming. Yup, it's Stamina Master time. Beating this level alone is a grand feat, but doing it without touching a ring? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. Immediately, I noticed a bunch of rings on the hill, and I got so discouraged by this that I decided to attempt cheese strats several times over. I used the jump exploit to gain extra speed, but no matter how good my momentum was being carried, I couldn't reach the goal pole. So that means there really was only one option. Somehow jump over these rings. Now you probably noticed something, but uh, this, this path here, it is very, 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 very skinny. You can go two directions, forward and back. If you turn at all, you're falling. So the angle needs to be lined up absolutely perfectly, which takes a lot of practice to get used to. Then once you are used to it, you realize how hard it is to actually jump over the rings themselves, especially the one on the top because it's perched so high in the air. So I had no choice but to turn on the slow-mo and give it a whirl. I found that by turning on slow-mo after jumping over the first ring, that would give me enough momentum to jump over the very top ring. But the issue then was the ring right below that. It always got in the way if I went too fast. So just slow down right? Well, I can't do that either because I'll lose too much speed and hit the top ring anyway. So the only feasible way of getting around this problem was to turn on slow-mo, jump the first three rings, turn it off for a split second, turn it right back on again, and then jump once again and get off the hill. This was the only method I found that worked. And after that, I still wasn't done. I had to get into the green goal by bouncing off the green vine thing at just the right angle. Let me tell you, there were so, so many attempts where I cleared the thin hill and and then messed up the angle right at the end. It was beyond infuriating. But then this happened. Go! 
Dude, I screamed yes at the top of my lungs because hallelujah, that will never happen again. Springmaster wasn't as bad as I thought it'd be. Avoiding the rings were a little irritating, but I got a pattern down. And surprisingly, everything after that was pretty simple, including Dance Master, Roll Master, Edge Master, Dodge Master, Bridge Master, and finally Monkey Master. That is every Monkey Ball one stage completed, with only three of the stages not possible. So with that, let's hop into Monkey Ball 2. Oh, man, that was a lot of stages. Jeez. Wait, when did I get these glasses? Wait, or what about this pair? Wait, or this pair? Or this pair? This pair? What? Oh, right. These are from today's sponsor. Warby Parker is committed to providing exceptional vision care online and in stores, offering eyeglasses, sunglasses, eye exams, and contact lenses. Glasses start at $95, including prescription lenses. You can try Warby Parker's free home try-on program. Order five pairs of glasses to try at home for free for five days, with no obligation to buy. Hey, Charles, what do you think of these glasses? Thoughts? You, you look like an Apple employee. Thank you. It ships free and includes a prepaid return shipping label. You can try five pairs of glasses at home for free at warbyparker.com slash bandy. So we're going to be a bit more brief with Monkey Ball 2 and the other stages moving forward because all 20 stages in casual mode were really easy. There were a couple of weird moments like the excessive amount of bananas in Wendy's slide as well as turning on the play button for quick turn, but otherwise there isn't much to say. So we'll just jump into normal mode from here. <laughs> Floors 1 through 5 were all pretty easy, and I thought Swell would be as well. Even though they added a lot of bananas, jumping over them was easy enough. The issue was the very end. The banana bunch was ridiculously close to the goal pole, and no matter how many times I tried to avoid it, I just couldn't. I could technically reach the goal first, but I'd always hit the bananas right after. Gravity Slider was also an interesting one because of the very end. There was a banana super close to the goal yet again, and no matter how many times I tried to jump over it, I'd always miss my shot or hit the banana anyway. The only way I could do this one was to bounce off the disco ball to slow down considerably and then angle the jump just right in slow-mo. After that followed an extremely long list of simple levels. Floors 8 through 5 took anywhere from one try to a small handful of tries, so there isn't much to say about them. Domes on the other hand was obnoxious. I will say that the domes themselves are not elevated as high as the original, so they were slightly easier to navigate, but of course there's a banana bunch at the very end that I have to avoid. At first, I tried just jumping over everything and reaching the goal, and whenever I got that, I'd always hit the bananas on the way. So instead, I had to very carefully roll across the domes, then I'd jump over the last couple and do a final big jump over the bunch to clear this one. The final four levels were a cakewalk as well, so that means it's time to move on to the expert stages. <laughs> Experts started off very similar to advanced, where the first 12 floors were extremely easy to complete. The fun really began with opera, because there were way too many bananas on the steps for me to avoid every banana perfectly, so I was gonna have to use the jump exploit, and at first I wasn't really sure if it was gonna work. I was getting a good amount of speed, but not quite enough to get far enough to the goal. But with practice, I managed to get more distance by bumping the staircase, but then that caused me to go a touch too fast. So I knew this was gonna be doable, but the precision needed to be spot f***ing on. Uh, I'm not sure why I didn't fly away, but I'll take it. Floors 14 through 17 weren't too much trouble, but Detour was certainly a detour. I couldn't do this the normal way because I went too fast down the hill and always bounced on the pole, which would send me back down the hill. So I basically had to do a really precise jump that took a good 20 or so tries to get. The angle is much more awkward to get than it looks, believe me. Switch Inferno and Earthquake were pretty straightforward at least, and I sure wish I could say the same about Spiral Bridge. Nothing about this level required strats or really anything like that. It was just a pain in the ass. The camera just did not want to cooperate. It was jiggly and just kind of went in whatever direction it wanted to. It's like this in the original game as well, so this isn't a banana mania problem. This level's just horrible in general. The only way I could get through it was to use slow-mo and ride off this tiny brown railing. That was the only way I could ensure I wouldn't hit a banana. And even then, I fell several times because it's just not a lot of space to work with. But I was able to finish this level at least. 
The next three floors weren't too bad, but the pain wasn't over yet since I had to worry about Steve next. And boy oh boy did the pain arrive. I spent over an hour on this, which is the longest amount of time I spent on any of the levels. There was only two strategies to complete this one, and both of them sucked. Option one was to slowly jump over all the bananas, go around this loop, and try to stay straight at the end to avoid getting knocked off by the blazing fast Steve. Option two was to build up speed by jumping, land on the edge of this loop, and then somehow build enough speed to jump over the sieve at the end while also avoiding the bananas, staying straight, and slowing down to hit the goal. Shockingly, option two was much easier. Going straight in this game is way harder than it has any right to be because maintaining that while also jumping over bananas is nearly impossible, even with slow-mo turned on. However, with option two, I have more room for small errors since I'm getting a lot of airtime. And I use the term small error very loosely because I have to do everything almost perfectly still. After hundreds of attempts, I figured out that by jumping four times very specifically at the beginning would give me a decent camera angle and shot of speed to jump off this loop to the next area. If you don't do this, you'll either undershoot or overshoot your jump, and you also need to initiate slow-mo perfectly because that controls your velocity. Because of all of these variables, it was extremely hard to get good at doing this. It came down to pure reaction timing. Once I got to the long part at the end, I had to ensure that I did not touch the sieve, as that would guarantee a failure every single single time. And even if I'm doing that, I still need to carefully avoid the bananas covering the road and then slow down perfectly. Like, I can't begin to describe how many times I got to the end, but I touched a banana by accident, or I was going too fast and couldn't slow down, or I just made a stupid mistake because I got nervous. I was able to complete this after almost an hour and a half, but I honestly didn't feel that satisfied. I just wanted it to be over with. Thankfully, the next five levels were a piece of cake, and Pistons wasn't too bad either. It took a good amount of tries because the bananas were covered over the narrow paths, so I couldn't really walk over them without getting blasted out of bounds or falling. So I needed to use the triangle pistons to my advantage by launching myself into the air as straight as possible and jumping very carefully to the goal after that. Soft cream took some tries since I needed to get a good bounce at the end, and momentum was somehow done the first try. I'm not sure how I came up with that strategy on the spot, but I'll take it. This was another stage that took a lot of tries, but there was really only one tricky jump to nail, and that was the last one since I needed to basically hit the green goal completely blind, but when I did hit it, oh man, that was a sweet feeling. Following that was 17 extremely easy stages. This is how this challenge has kind of been, I've noticed. You plow through a big chunk of them, and then you get stuck on one for five minutes or over an hour. Speaking of, Strata was the next stage for me to get stuck on. I already had a game plan going into it, and that was jumping off the path and hitting the goalpost from the opposite side. I've done this several times in the original game, so I knew that it would work, but my god was it painfully hard still. The problem was that the disco balls kept getting in the way, and the camera angle just didn't want to work with me. I wasn't really given enough time to redirect my movement, which led me to missing the goal dozens and dozens of times. I did eventually get it, but it took a good while. And then after that, the rest of the stages for Expert were really easy. So that only means one thing. It's time to move on to the Master Stages. <laughs> this might come as a shock to you, but the first 17 stages were really easy, despite these being on the Master level. The jumping really does make a huge difference, and I didn't run into any trouble until Helix. Now again, if you've been following me for a while, you know how much I absolutely dread this stage. And it wasn't much easier here. Thankfully, there aren't that many bananas to avoid. It really just comes down to the level design being an actual train wreck. So I started by trying to play normally while jumping over the bananas, but one tiny slip up and you're falling to your death. So I had to resort to my last option, which of course is the slow-mo. I might have been able to beat this stage without it, but I hate it with a burning passion, so I kinda just wanted to get it over with. By jumping off near this banana, I was able to line myself up with the goal fairly well. Even after figuring this out, it took a ton of tries, but I did eventually nail the timing. And after that were the last two master stages, both of which were a piece of cake, so now it's time to tackle the 10 story mode exclusive stages. As you may expect at this point, the majority of them were really easy to pull off. Last stage wasn't too bad either, but the ending was a little tricky. There's three banana bunches to avoid, and it was difficult to do that because of how high and fast I was falling. But with some practice, I managed to complete this, which leaves us with just the deluxe exclusive stages. A very large portion of these levels were easy, which was honestly kind of nice after some of the ones I've been stuck on for this video. And then there was Catwalk, and I was immediately concerned. 
There's two different paths I can take. Both of them have walls of bananas that I won't be able to avoid, even with jump speed. The easier route has way more bananas to avoid, so my only option was to take the harder route. The only thing I could do was move to this corner and get two or three jumps in to jump over these banana bunches, but no matter how many times I did this, I always hit at least one bunch. I just didn't have another way to build up speed. Thankfully, these were the only bananas I needed to hit, as I was able to jump over the rest of them, but this is another stage that isn't possible. After another five stages, Waver was up and was kicking my butt. It wasn't even that bad until the very end, because these wavy roads got skinnier and skinnier, and it was at a point where I needed to jump from hilltop to hilltop. This was extremely difficult to do, but I eventually found the right spots to jump off, and with some practice, I was able to complete this. Five more easy levels in, and building was slightly irritating. It didn't get difficult until the end because there were lots of bananas on another skinny path, so by using slow-mo, I was able to very carefully jump over them, even with the incline. At this point, there was only one more level that gave me trouble, and that is Spatio-Temporal. If I said that right, I don't know. This is such a short level, but it was stupidly aggravating. There's a row of 17 bananas in front of this goalpost, and yes, I did count that out since I needed to perfectly time when to swoop into the goal. What would happen most of the time was that I'd go through the portal, and I'd hit the very first banana because it almost entirely blocks the doorway. The camera also did not want to cooperate, which is why I resorted to counting the bananas so I could figure figure out how close I was to the goalpost. Eventually, I figured out different camera angles to enter the portal at, and slowly got better at pointing the camera in the right direction. But even then, I had to very precisely move my monkey at just the right time, and I was able to get it. And that is basically it. The rest of the deluxe stages were pretty simple to complete, without much to add. Out of 314 stages, only 4 of them weren't possible. That is kind of insane for how many stages are available. I almost completed them all without a single drop of potassium. Now, I know a lot of these stages weren't shown in full, so for anyone that's curious, you can check out this video here where I've compiled all 314 stages without any cuts. And with that said, thanks for watching.